The reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Matthew 6, verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in bars. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run under after these, all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There we go. I'm all attached now, so I can't move very far. <laughs> That's great. Good morning. Um, my name is Ronnie, for those of you who I may not have met before, and I work here on, on the staff team at Holy Trinity. Um, and before we just have a look at God's word together, let me, let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you care for us. Please help us by the power of your spirit as we think about your word now to know you better, to be transformed more into Jesus' likeness and grow us together as your family. In his name. Amen. So I have a few objects here. I'm going to show them to you out of my bag here, but they'll also come up on the screen and um, you may be able to see those as well. And I'd like you to see if you can work out a connection between these objects, okay? A connection between these objects. They're all used or have been used at some point for the same thing. Um, this is a very large leaf, isn't it? Look at that, it's one of my rhubarb leaves. Okay, so that's the first object, a leaf. Not always that big, but sometimes they've been that, that big. Okay, that's the first one. A stick, okay? So we've got a leaf and a stick here. There we go. Uh, next one, we've got some straw. Okay, some straw. What are we thinking so far? What kind of things do you think so far? Any ideas? Go for it, Violet. Hard to say, can you say it nice and loudly? They're all from nature. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. But they're all used for something, so you get you're on the right track. It's a stone, a nice smooth stone. That's nature as well, isn't it? What could you use all these things for, I wonder? Let me have one more as a sponge. There's some, a sponge. Any ideas what you could use them for? No, let's keep, keep going. Some newspaper. The newspaper. Some of you older folks, I know I've certainly used this for this task before, I can tell you. Okay, I'm going to show you the last one. And as soon as I show you this, you're going to get it. Okay, you won't believe it, but you'll get it. Toilet roll. There we go. All of those things down the centuries have been used by people to wipe their bottoms. They have. 
clearly a stone. A stone. That's why I said it had to be a nice smooth one. There apparently is, I haven't seen it myself, but on the website they showed me a picture of a Greek urn with a picture of a man on it using a stone to wipe his butt up. So there we go. Archaeological evidence. There we go. Why am I showing us these? Well, because uh, there's a, the first slide in, in um, you know, wiping bottoms is very important to people. And right at the beginning of the lockdown, do you remember what happened? Shelves were like this. People just grabbed toilet rolls. They were having fights in shops over getting toilet rolls. It's just incredible. It seemed to be very important. People were afraid of not having enough toilet paper. That's what they look. Now, I could understand. The next slide, please, Bruce. The next one, I could understand. Maybe flour, pasta, rice, soup. I can understand why people might have wanted to take that. But toilet roll, I'm still not sure that I quite understand about that. Now, did you hear in our, our Bible reading today, what was Jesus, what were the people that Jesus were talking about? He was talking to them. What were they worried about? Did you hear they were worried about, he said, well, not to worry, but that means that they were worrying about food, about clothes. You see, they were worrying perhaps even about having money and enough money to buy those things. We're going to very briefly do a bit of time travel. Next slide, please, Bruce. There we go. This is what life would have been like for people back in Jesus' day. We go back and think about what it was like for them. What, would you, what was Jesus saying to them before we kind of come forward and think about it for ourselves? So there's a picture there that is um, them. They would have lived in a simple house, probably one room. See the goat they've got there. They would have shared that room with their goat. Their goat was very important to them. Lady's got a jar on her head. She would have gone and got water. Next slide, please, and Bruce. Their work, they might have been, most of them would have been farmers growing their own produce. There might have been some fishermen. We hear a lot about fishermen in the Bible, don't we? Jesus was a carpenter. There was a craftsman who would then sell their things so that they could buy other things from the market. They might have looked after cattle, all kinds of things they would have done. Next slide, please, Bruce. Their clothes would have been very simple made out of wool of, or linen, made out of flax, out of a plant. Um, but you know, again, there's archaeological evidence to say that these folks may well have seen travellers from other places and might have seen their clothes, the different colours, the different styles, the things they'd done with them, and they would copy them. They would try and copy them. And so they might want to get grow a few more tomatoes or a few more bits of grain to sell so that they could get I don't know about your tomatoes this year. I think a lot of us did a lot more growing in lockdown than maybe we have done before. And in those two weeks when it was really hot, I had to water my tomatoes at least two or three times a day to keep them alive. Now, these people in this time, if they'd had a really long, hot spell, they might, their crops might have failed. Their animals might have got sick. They might not have been able to have enough water to have kept their animals alive. So we can see why they might have worried. We can see why they might have been worried. Now, Jesus is talking in Matthew to a great big crowd of people who have come to listen to him, learn about what the kingdom of God is like. And he's told them all sorts of things, what it looks like to live with God as your king. What do the people look like? He's told them that they shine. Do you remember those verses? And show others God. They settle arguments well. They're faithful in marriage. They're sexually pure. They keep their promises. They give humbly. They depend on God in prayer. And they're concerned more about heaven than they are with their earthly life. So Jesus has been talking about these things. And now he talks them about food and clothes. But if you look, if you've got a Bible... The verse just before the one we had read, Jesus talks about money. He says, you cannot serve both God and money. And then he goes on, therefore, I tell you, do not worry. So he's talking about money and food and clothes and stuff, those things that we sometimes can get very worried about. You see, what do we do when we worry? What do we do when we worry? 
we kind of think about things a lot. Has anybody ever had a sleepless night when they're worrying about something? I know I certainly have. Yeah, have you had them as well? Yeah, definitely. We think about things. We might go on the internet and research how we can do stuff. We might um, talk to people about how concerned we are about things. We might go around from one shop to the other to the other and think about how we can get enough of the things that we're going to need. We might be worried that our Amazon um, um, food delivery isn't going to turn up on time. We might worry that there aren't going to be the things on the shelves that we usually get. You see, Jesus is saying to these folks, you can spend a lot of time and energy on worry, but actually there's something better to spend your time and your energy on. He's saying to those folks, and he's saying it to us, that even though we might be afraid in these times of not having enough food, maybe some people have lost their jobs and might not have enough money, we might be uncertain about the future. We might be worrying about already whether are we going to have enough money to buy Christmas presents for our children. There's lots of things that we will be afraid about. Maybe many, many people are afraid about not having enough. Well, let's see, what does Jesus say? I've got five Ps for us today, five Ps. We're going to start with the first one. Can I get you to show the next, this one here? Do you, how do you remember, Jesus gave us two examples, didn't he? He says that, he says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. They've got seeds from the grass there. They've got some berries. And the next one, please, Bruce. There are some beautiful flowers there in a meadow, aren't they? And Jesus says, look, this is how God cares for his creation. This is how God cares. But notice what he he says about us, that we are precious. He says that we are precious. He says that, um, that we are more valuable. In verse 26, are you not much more valuable than they? We are precious to God. That's our first P. And do you remember right back in Genesis when Adam and Eve had sinned against God and he turned them out of the garden? What did he do for them? He made them some clothes, didn't he, out of animal skins. Even though they turned away from him, he still cared for them, he still provided, he made them some clothes. Even though they had to go away, he was still caring for them. You see, when we do that worry thing, we're kind of saying, well, God can't, we don't, God doesn't care. I need to do this myself. I need to be dependent. I need to stand on my own two feet. I need to go out and sort all of this out. We don't sometimes live as people who depend and trust on God. And Jesus is telling us that's what we need to be doing. He even says, have a look at verse 32. He says, For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. We can sometimes act like people who don't even believe in God at all. We're so dependent on ourselves. Now, do we think that Jesus is saying, God is going to provide everything for you. You don't need to work. I'm just going to drop everything in your lap. No, that's not what he's saying, is it? Because we know in other parts of the Bible, in Proverbs particularly, he encourages us to work, not to be lazy, look at the ants, store up a little bit. So it's not wrong to store up little bits, to be sensible, to be wise with the things that God has given us. But our next P is priority. We need to get things in the right priority. We need to be putting God first before worrying, before all our planning and running around. He says, doesn't he, in verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God. Put him as number one. So before we plan our finances, before we see what's in the cupboard or worry about running out of toilet paper, let's pray, let's talk to him, let's seek him, let's pursue him as our first priority. Because, you see, the the thing we have, the, the biggest problem that we have isn't really that we're not going to have enough here on earth, is it? Our problem is sin that will separate us from God. That means that we can't go into eternity and have the wonderful provision that God has got ready and waiting for us there. So sin is our biggest problem. And having our sin removed 
by believing and trusting in Jesus who died on the cross to take the punishment for that sin. That's what we need most. And the Bible describes heaven, describes the new creation as a banquet where there will be food and provision. It's going to be like a big party. No worries over death. No worries over sin or um, of, of pain or suffering. That's what we need to be putting our time and our energy into. Our relationship with our Heavenly Father. And he will provide, another P, he will provide for us. Jesus says, have a look, he says, who can of you, verse 27, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Actually, there's lots of evidence to show that by worrying, you take time away from your life, actually. But actually, by having our relationship right with God, we can add eternity to our lives. We add eternity. But we are sinful, aren't we? We always kind of, there's always that temptation to want more than um, than we should have. Have you ever been to party children, particularly, but grown up, so I know we're, we can do this? Do you ever go to a party and somebody brings around a nice tasty tray of treats? Do you just take one? Maybe take two or three, because you're always a little bit worried that there's going to be a bit empty by the time you come round. Quite often we take more than we need, don't we? Do you remember when we used to have biscuits outside? Do you remember those times? Not so long ago. But quite often the children would take three or four because they thought if, they, if they'd only took one and they came back again, they might not have any left. Some children were very, very reserved and only took one. But we do it, don't we, when we go to the shops. Here we go. Um, got some things in my, in my box here. This is kind of the children to see, a visual example for the children to see. But grown-ups, it's us as well. We go to the shops, don't we? And we see, well, I need, I need something to make something for dinner. I'll pick up my, my bits and pieces. I'll put them in my basket. And put, oh, I haven't had those for a very long time. I'm going to put some of those in there as well. Excellent. And, oh, I can put some of those in the freezer. And, yep, the, oh, those are on special offer. There's a bog off on one of those. I'm going to get those ones while they're there. They're, they're a really good idea. And I'll put them in my cupboard. Excellent. And I'll have a few of those as well because you never know. I might not be able to get to the shops by the end of the week. And if the weather turns out a bit nasty, I might not be able to get there. I'll put those in there. Or maybe we're online and we're clicking and we're thinking, oh, that looks good. And click and click and click. It's so easy, isn't it? to get drawn in to that way of just taking so much more than we need. And that's part of our sinful hearts. It's part of our sinful nature. We will all do it. I've got something here, a bottle of cow pole. I have two adult sons. One is 23 and one is 27. They do not need cow pole. Why have I got about, I haven't got any grandchildren. Why do I need a bottle of cow? Well, to confess. During the beginning of lockdown, we were in the Cotswold. Craig and I had gone away and then lockdown happened. And I knew that, you know, some things were getting a bit short supply. And I went to Tesco's to get a few bits and pieces up in the Cotswolds, miles away from people that I knew. And this lady came out with this big tray of cow pole and she put, started putting it on the shelves. I thought, we haven't got any cow pole down where I am. Let's take one. Somebody might need it. Well, that's, you know, it's quite nice to think that somebody might need it. But actually, I got, I rang up, I messaged Lee and put a message on um, Sarah and on the ladies' WhatsApp. Said, anybody need some cow pole? No, they'd all got enough cow pole. They were fine. I still got it. That's terrible, isn't it? That's bad. Anybody want a bottle of cow pole? Please take it. Um, but I had got drawn in. I didn't trust God that he was going to supply the needs for my friends down in Wallington. I just saw it there and took it. Didn't think about the people that might be in the Cotswolds who needed the cow pole. Oh, no, I, mean, that's, I, mean, I was almost ashamed to share it with you, really. It's not a great thing. It's my sinful heart. Not trusting God, my sinful heart. So God says that we are precious to him. We are to put him as our number one priority, not other stuff. Now, and I know our next P is, um, is going to be is going to be perspective. James, can I get you to do that for me, please? Because I can't move back that way. I want to do a little exercise here. I don't know if you guys at home can see this or not, so forgive me if you can't. We've got um, a circle up there at the back. I hope it's not offending anybody that we've put it up there at the cross. It's just for an, an illustration. So. 
what I'd like you to do is, is get your hand, put your hand up in front of the circle and see, can you blot out the circle by putting your hand up in front of it? Sorry if I'm in your way, I'll move out of the way. Can you do that? Can you put your hand, can most of you blot out the circle just with your hand? Yeah? Okay, James, would you, oops, would you mind going and getting it for us? What happens as we bring that circle closer, as we reduce the distance between it, I don't know if you can still blot it out. Can you still blot it out with your hand? Yes, yeah, some of you might be able to. I certainly can't. It's come, that's called perspective, children. I'm sure glad grown ups you already knew that. But when something's far away, it seems small. When it's up front, in front of you, it seems a lot bigger. And that's what we do with our worries. The pile of bills might be there. The empty cupboard is right in front of us. We're not sure what's going on. Those worries seem really big right in front of us. And God seems too small to even care or bother about it. But when we pursue him, another P, when we pursue him, and Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God, to go to God first, he gets bigger. And he is bigger than all the worries that we have. He is so much bigger and he is able to provide and in verse 32, Jesus says, your heavenly father knows that you need them. God knows what we need. He knows what we need. Now, I know it's very easy for me to stand here and say, don't worry, God will provide. It can seem a bit harsh if somebody's really struggling, can't it? I know people in our church family who don't know if they're going to be able to pay their mortgage next month. I know people in our church family who have very great concerns about whether they will have enough food over the next few weeks. They're very great concerns. But Jesus says, keep looking to God and keep those things in perspective and he will provide. Now, I don't think God is going to drop pizza on your lap. OK, is that going to happen, Violet Pixie? No, probably not, is it? or he's going to put loads of money in your bank account. I love the story in the Bible where Jesus has got to pay his taxes, and he says to Peter, go, go, go fishing. He picks up, goes and gets a fish, and in the fish is a coin that he pays his taxes with. God has amazing ways of providing for people. And God is sovereign over everything. He is sovereign over people and authorities as well. So can I ask you, anybody ever fed the birds in their garden? Anybody put out some feed for their birds? Anybody got bird feeders and things? Yeah, some of you have. Well, you are doing exactly what God's, you are providing for the birds. God is using you to feed the birds. And God does that for us as well. And today as we celebrate harvest, the abundance that we have, as James said, we are called to give and to bless others with what we have. But, you know, a bit like that man in the video, if we find ourselves in difficulty, we need to be humble and ask for help sometimes, don't we? And we can sometimes find that very difficult, particularly if we are in that worry situation and we think we've got to do everything. We sometimes aren't humble and ask, and we need to be looking again to Jesus, the perfect example of humility. He came down from heaven. He came to the earth, humble as a servant. And do you remember in one of the Gospels, we're told that Jesus needed help to carry the cross. He could have carried that on his own. He was, he's God. He's supernatural. He could have carried that and, and said, no, actually, I don't need any help. I'm going I'm to do this. I'm going to go to the cross on my own. But he accepted help from Simon of Cyrene. Jesus accepted help we can accept help as well. So we go to him, we cry out to him, we pray to him, we talk to other Christians, we seek help from those around us instead of worrying. And God uses, doesn't he, the trussle trust with the food banks, he'll use CAP to get alongside people with financial worries. And we are blessed to live in a country where we've got a benefit system which was set up on the God-given principle that those with more help those with less. 
Now, prayer. I know people who have had unexpected tax rebates when they've prayed about financial difficulties. I know people who have had little miracles because of families, um, the church family helping them out. I'm going to give you two examples. One, a, um, a young lady in our, our congregation was looking for some boots for her daughter coming up for winter. She, but wherever she went, she didn't have enough money to buy the boots that she could, she could afford. They didn't have the ones in the right size. And then one of the ladies just happened to put on our WhatsApp group, some, her daughter had grown out of some boots and they were really good condition. Guess what? They fitted perfectly, this other little girl. So she's got some lovely boots for the winter. There's another fam, another couple who gave up, the, the gentleman gave up his job because he felt that the Lord was challenging him to go into, to have his own business. And they talked about it. They prayed about it. They sought wisdom from other Christians. And they thought, yes, this is what we're going to do. And things were not going well. He wasn't getting enough business. And they came on weekends, empty cupboards, no food in the fridge. They didn't know what they, they thought, have we got this wrong? We thought this was what God wanted us to do. They prayed. They went out for a walk. They came back. And in their porch was a chicken. Not a live one. Um, one in a, in a bag for them to cook. Um, and somebody had put a note on it saying, God prompted me to bring this chicken to you. Don't know why. And then later on, about an hour or so later, somebody knocked on the door with a bag of vegetables. So I don't really know why I'm doing this. I'm bringing you a bag of vegetables, but I, you know, God wanted me to bring you some vegetables. They had a wonderful meal. God answers prayer. He does provide in all sorts of ways, through people, through us, through organisations, all sorts of ways God provides for us. So we need to, our P's, remember that we are precious to God. He cares about our needs. He cares about us. We need to prioritise him above all else above worrying about stuff. Keep our worries in perspective. Pursue God, go closer to him, and our worries will get smaller. Go and seek other people in your church family to help out. Pursue him, pursue your church family, and he will provide for you. I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, would you help us, please, to seek first your kingdom and to believe and to trust that all those other things that we need will be added to us. Help us not to worry about tomorrow. Help us to remember, as it says in the Lord's Prayer, that we will have enough for today. Please help us this week to remember you and to, to honour you by sharing the good things that we have, that you have given us with others who may need it, that you may work through us to provide and love somebody else. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.